a very interesting conversation today with Dr. Terence. I love calling you Dr. Terence. <laughs> I think it's so cool. And then I see you with your beard. Your yeah. beard is so much better than mine. That's for look, sure. Look, I had to, I had to keep it moisturized. That's, what, that's why it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I love your beard. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for, for being here. And, and can we do it so there's always in these conversations the yeah. background who is who i want to skip everything i want to Got go it. directly to the essence of everything and then yeah. we will explore more also about you and how you're thinking because you are very cool and you did so many things and yeah. you're dr terence but we will get to that i want yeah, to yeah, talk yeah. because it it all comes back to dream killers it's mm -hmm. how are our dreams being killed? What, right. What are dream killers for you? Right. All right. So, all right. So I'll take you all the way to the origin of kind of like what it first came to me. Uh, so I said, I'm a, I'm a Kanye West fan. A lot of people, you know, I don't agree with everything he does, but I'm a Kanye West fan at heart. So before his first album came out, he had a mixtape and it was a song that talked about dream killers. And that was the first time that I heard it. And it was about like people trying to kill your dreams, all that kind of stuff. So it was about, I can't remember when College Dropout came out, but it was like that summer or something right before then. Yeah. So that's where it first came from. And How then, old were you? Do, you? do you remember Terrence more or less? Uh, I was in, I had to be in undergrad. So... Might have been like I think college dropout came out my freshman year in college. I think it was because twenty uh two thousand and two or two thousand and three, maybe. Yeah, yeah, that would have been yeah. freshman year for me. So I think around that time, that's when yeah. they when they nineteen twenty something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so it stuck in my head up until I think I got the real experience of that when I was I had a job and I had a boss that was really really just toxic mm -hmm. and I remember I went to my office one day and that's when I had the first Galaxy Note phone uh and so I love the Galaxy Notes and you could write notes in your phone mm -hmm. I just went in there and I was like man she's trying to kill my dreams like she, why she always like got some negative to say like she always questioning what I'm doing and all that and so I started sketching out notes in my note phone and like doing sketches and writing notes about like, oh, what's pretty much you were focused on people killing your dreams, like people that are trying to stop you. And then I had to think about it. I was like, well, and it's not really people that stopping people from doing things. It's our own selves. Yeah. And then I started to shift. Ho, ho. But now you're going fast. So oh. this is everybody recognize this, right? The outside world is, is killing our dreams. Everybody mm -hmm. has dreams. We all right. have our thoughts on this is how we will do it. Right. And then the outside world is saying it's not possible or you won't make it or are you sure or mm -hmm. I think you should do something else. Right. And then you're saying, but that's not the outside world. That's you saying that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Can we can we dive into that in more yeah. a little bit of a detail? Because if if you if your wife or your school or your mm -hmm. or your father is saying you can't do that, mm -hmm. then it's coming from the outside world, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they are the dream killers, no? So it so it, it's a little bit of both. Mm -hmm. So for me. <laughs> It's certain things we pick up in here. So I believe we all have inherent things that we already created to be talented in, we're gifted in, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, now, what happens is as we grow older, our perspective of ourselves is shaped by the people around us because they tell us who they believe we should be through the lens that they see us through. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And as, yeah. Yeah, as we get older, we then start to see ourselves the way we want to see ourselves. And some that, sometimes that creates conflict with the people yeah. that's around us because they want us to be a certain way because it serves them, it helps them, it, it serves whatever purpose they have for us. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so that awareness of me, but not only what I do, but who I am, that's important because we don't always have that. But to override that, you have to have a way to filter out the comments and the perspectives of other people. Because do you think do you think we should ignore the outside world, the others? Would I, I spoke with someone yesterday. She had a very interesting story. Mm -hmm. And she said she was 22 and she wanted to go surfing in her RV, not surfing in her RV, but she wanted to go away with her mm -hmm. RV yeah. and go surfing for two years. Mm -hmm. And her tactic, her method of, of living back then already when she was 22 was not sharing her ideas with anyone because then they would kill her dream. And she would just rather ask questions, where can I buy an old RV? Mm -hmm. and, and how can I get my dog vaccinated so I can go to Mexico? Rather right. than, hey, I'm planning to go to Mexico for two years. What do you think? Is that, so that's also a dream killer, right? So we're, we're asking for confirmation. Mm -hmm. We have an idea. We shared mm -hmm. with others and we want confirmation because I don't know why. And, mm -hmm. and, and instead of getting confirmation, your dreams are being destroyed. Right, right. So I'm glad you, so what I call it is, I believe ideas need an incubation period. Just like if you have a baby that's born like prematurely and they had to go into the incubator to kind of get the nutrients and everything they need in order for them to be a fully, you know, formed baby, ideas need the same thing. Mm -hmm. So sometimes as an idea comes to you, it's not ready to be shared because most of the time you want to share because you're excited about it. But most people can't because people that are, you know, real creative, visionary people, they see the whole picture. I see the whole thing in my mind. But me talking about it won't get that visual across to people. So I've learned that I have to have something tangible to show people saying like, hey, this is the, the construction of the idea that is more tangible for them. I don't really necessarily need it. But it comes a time where you need some involvement from other people, but it's not at the beginning, because like you said, that can kill it then, because they're, anytime you show it to somebody else, they're going to start analyzing it, critiquing it, asking questions that you don't have answers for. Yeah. And not saying that you won't have all the answers. Well, but not, not only not have answers for it, but they will also criticize and be right. very negative to you. Right, 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 right. 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 And and I'm, I'm, maybe you can help me with that because when I see, you know, these internet gurus that have 9 million followers, mm -hmm. influencers like Gary V saying, mm -hmm. fuck the opinions of others. And I, I don't agree with him. I, right. I understand why he's saying that, right? right you right, should right. do your own thing. But is it, is it healthy to be thinking that way? Or, or, or should it be more like if you have an idea, put it in the incubator, think about it rather than sharing it with everyone until you're ready for it, right. then, you know, fuck the other, the other's opinion, because that's, that's too sharp. That's too, too short. Right. Right. Be because we, I do care what you think of me. I do care. Right. If, right. if you enjoy this interview or not, if in the end right. you're saying, Perry, you know, I don't know what's wrong with you today, but your, your questionnaires were really lousy. I care mm -hmm. about that. Right? And, right. and I will say, you know what, Terrence, let's do another take and, right. and, and see if we can change it. So right. are, are people like that who are saying, you know, you shouldn't be care, caring about what others say. Are they wrong? Or how do we see that? Because yeah. yeah. I find it so difficult. Yeah, I so for me, I had to focus on impact mm -hmm. versus um, because what you what you're talking about has more of an impact or connection piece. So it's like if you interviewing me, you want this conversation to connect not only to like both of us in exchanging information and knowledge, 
but for the audience that you have that'll be listening to it, and you want to make sure that you provide value to them, mm-hmm. which is important and it's important to you. So the same thing for me is I, if I create something, I'm not really, I'm not doing it to say like, hey, I want you to like it. I want, I'm creating it because I want the person that is designed to help to be able to access it and really understand why it can benefit them. Yeah. Um, and I think when people just say like, hey, you just do it and don't care what other people think about it. That's more like monetary gain driven. It's like just just worry about getting the money, get the numbers and whatever. And I'm not wired that way. And that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's and the reason why some things haven't been broadly shared is because I would rather reach the people that need to be reached versus have 5 million people in a course and they're taking it, but they get no results from it. Exactly. And money means no value to me if what I'm creating is not bringing value and growth for people. Yeah. And that's that's a process you have to go through because you have to really construct something with them in mind. Mm-hmm. So just like the personas and all that is created intentionally because I know those are words, those are things that everybody go through. So when they hear it, they watch it, they connect to it. And it's like, oh, I see me. Yeah. And, and that's that's what the goal is. I like that. Yeah. yeah. What about we are being misunderstood? What about we're different? We're different from the people around us. And, right. and so we think in images. We, we both do that. I think we could work well together in creating <laughs> you know, projects. And, and we can, if, if we talk about it and we close our eyes, we can see it in front of us. We think in images. Right. Right. And then working together is wonderful because mm-hmm. we dream the same way. We create the same way. So we find each other. Mm-hmm. What about, and, and let's talk about teenagers. That's mm-hmm. this is a very interesting group. What about these teenagers that are at school mm-hmm. trying to do their best and they're being misunderstood and they have to follow the exact lines of expectations at school you have to have these grades. Otherwise, you will not get your diploma mm-hmm. and you will fail in life. And if you're, if you're not succeeding, you're out of here. Mm-hmm. How does that work? Because those for me are also dream killers. You're at school. You want to, mm-hmm. but apparently your learning might, may, might not be in line with the general learning. Mm-hmm. then what yeah so i'm glad <laughs> i'm glad you brought that up because that's something that that really got me to the point where i shifted because as a you know as a high school high school senior whatever you're trying to figure out what you want to major in what school you want to go to those are like major decisions you make in your life up to mm-hmm. that point because yeah. they can change your trajectory and and because I've been in those those settings where I work with college students, once they got once they made that transition from high school to college, they have pressure from the parents, their own pressures. They still don't know what they want to do. They're trying to figure themselves out, and it's all these major life decisions that have to be made in that span of time. And, and what they're not being told is that now they're in a, a age, and not just like age as far as like their you know chronological age but the period we are now as a society a lot of things that you go and major in they're not jobs for those industries anymore yeah a lot of things evolving everything's automated now so those traditional like you graduate and get your college degree and go right into your entry-level position Mm -hmm. a lot of those are not there no and so most of the kids now in this generation will get a degree and will have to almost move them on to like a gig economy where it's your skill sets and your knowledge, not your degree. Yeah. And so you have a lot of these certificate programs and a lot of people moving away, especially in like tech, IT, all those industries. 
they're moving away from the four year degrees. They yeah. have like either certificate programs they sponsor or, you know, different spaces you can go. It might be, you know, six month, nine month, a year program. You get that certificate and you can start, you know, yeah. for Google or whatever. Exactly. And so, yeah. so it's, yeah, and so a lot of things are changing, but a lot of fields, especially like education, what the kids are learning is it's outdated while they're there. So by the time they graduate, like, you know, the world has moved on so fast <laughs> that, that, you know, just like social media, it's industry now, it's jobs specific for like social media, you know, creation, management. It, those degrees didn't exist. <laughs> no. So the, the educational system is outdated. I think a lot of people will agree. Sorry. Right. Uh, <laughs> right. I always thought that education was preparing you for the real life, right? whatever that may be. Um, But that hasn't been the case and is definitely not the case right now, right? No. 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 (laughs) So what would you consider thinking back at at dream killing, right? Mm -hmm. Because for me, it feels a little bit that the educational system is killing the dreams of these kids because it's a mixed signal for me that when you do well at school, you have a feeling you're prepared for the future and you're ready for it. Maybe that works when you study medicine and you become a doctor. That still works. I get it, right? Mm -hmm. And, And there are still educational programs that are working that way. Mm -hmm. But in the majority, it for me, it feels that there is a double problem there that Mm -hmm. education is is killing the dreams of the students that are doing well and then they're out there and they're a bit lost. Like, yeah, but it's totally different than what I've learned. And it's killing the dreams of the kids that are struggling like crazy to do that system thinking and learning. And then in the end, they succeed or not. And they think they're a failure. And then they come into the outside world and they discover everything is possible. Mm -hmm. And they can be very successful. So isn't that dream killing twice or or (laughs) double? Or isn't that very difficult these days? Yeah. So so while you're talking, one thing I thought about, and this is something that is kind of magnifying things too more and more people are getting degrees mm-hmm. so it's almost kind of the same way with supply and demand when you don't have as much it makes it more valuable but if everybody has it then it, it it's almost like no value so you know having a doctor degree or advanced degree it used to mean something everybody has a doctor degree now Everybody has a master's degree now, so multiple degrees. Yeah. So that's not the litmus test of like high achievement because everybody has it. So mm-hmm. now what's the, what's the differentiation between it? And for me, I had to realize that, you know, my best quality is, you know, innovation and creation. Mm-hmm. That's what I've done all throughout my career, even though I've been in real standard arenas, education, mental health, those fields are real standard. And yeah, real... because you're educated to be a, what was your study? You're, you are so, a professional. Yeah, yeah. Well, I started off as an architecture major, actually. Architecture, yeah. <laughs> then, I tried, then I moved to psychology. Yeah. I'm a master in counseling and then I got my doctor in professional counseling. Yeah. But most of my degree work is not all of the knowledge bases that I have because I'm I'm real, you know, heavy as far as technology and innovation and design thinking and all that. But those are not my degree areas. No. <laughs> so, but, so like, but Terrence, uh, I if if I If I listen well, then I can hear people think, yes, but your education is also teaching you how to think, how to process information, how to write 
reports and 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 right. whatnot, right? Right. Right. Is it really true, or is is the way we interact now on creating podcasts, creating videos, creating content, are those the real life lessons today? And is that what's really happening rather than scientifically being educated in how to look at things? Yeah, so... I, I'm wondering, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm no, 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 it's not. So for me, people are looking for real practical things when you just throw a lot of figures and data and stuff at people, it's a space for that in an academic sense or whatever for that exchange, have no dialogue. But everyday people don't really care about that. They want something that they can hear and apply and see some results from. That's all they care about. And so for me, all these different pieces, I use them as kind of like my toolkit or like tools that I have at my disposal. So I'm like, well, how can I start to blend these tools together in a way that is simplistic, but it has the foundation of all the different aspects of me exactly. and knowledge bases. And so that's why with Dream Killers, even though it seems real simplistic about the personas and whatever, behind it is a lot of complex stuff <laughs> that go into like how it's framed up but how it's presented to people is real simple. It's like, oh, I get it. Because people don't want to be beat over the head by so much intellectualism. No. They want stories and things they can relate to. And they want to know about your story. They and want what stories. You, That's true. Yeah, they want stories. And so just like you talk about when, you know, being a visual person, that's what I started to do. How can I wrap these aspects that I want to help people with with a visual that are mm -hmm. triggered with them so like for me crossroads is important for me because it's easy for people to visualize that like oh if I'm stuck and I'm trying to figure out what decision I need to make I'm at a crossroads and I got I can go left or I can go right yeah and so then when they come up to another situation with like oh I'm straight like oh I'm at a crossroads so it's an instant kind of make a decision go here go there yeah it's a technique i have another question so what would you consider as the new mba the new phd the new i've heard this before you know yeah. about mbas so many mm -hmm. people are doing their mbas now mm -hmm. that in the old days <laughs> when i was young if you would do an mba you would be it. fine right yep. you get a yep. higher salary or when mm -hmm. you're an entrepreneur with an MBA, your network is through the roof mm -hmm. and you would be more successful. That's mm -hmm. not the case anymore. If you do an MBA, it's almost, I almost feel that it limits you mm -hmm. because you're again being directed in a linear thinking method. Yeah. And, and I, I feel that today we don't need that anymore. We need to be nonlinear and focus on lots of things at the same time and see different connections and connect that. What yeah. would you consider as the new MBA today? Man, so I almost, that was one thing I almost went into. I almost got an MBA. You did? <laughs> I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so when you talk about like, yeah, I almost went down that path a while ago. Um, it, I would it, say it used to be a very good investment, right? You right, would invest right, right. like twenty thousand dollars into your MBA, right. and you know, right. uh, within a year, you get that back by extra revenue or better salary or whatever. Right, right. and I, I know a lot of people that had MBAs, and I bounce ideas off of them too when I'm, you know, thinking yeah. about my business stuff. But for me, I'm like a, a social entrepreneur at heart. Yeah. So business is always connected to the greater good for me, not the bottom dollar. Mm -hmm. I'm just not wired that way, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm always focused on is what I'm creating or what we're doing in the business. Is it creating value or is it benefiting the people we're serving or will it benefit the community? So the overarching vision for like Dream Killers is not just getting people into a course or a workshop. 
it's really to activate the dreams or the ideas in people before they die. Yeah. Before they get so many rejections and get so much like pushback and you know they don't get the not even the support because the support is still gonna be <laughs> touch and go until it really comes together and like oh yeah that's what you're talking about i knew you're gonna make it oh i knew it was a great idea from the beginning like no you didn't you said it was trash what i told <laughs> you know? so but and i and I, for me it's just taking elements of my own journey because i've had it i've had you know I've talked about dream kills to other people. I've talked to a lot of people about different things I wanted to do and people like, oh, that's good, that's nice or whatever. But it's still having that determination to keep going forward. Everybody doesn't have that. And even for me, I have a lot of determination and drive. And there's been times I wanted to quit and stop. Yeah. Because like, is it worth all of this <laughs> to, to actually create something different or do something that I think is going to benefit other people do it in a different way? And we all need that community because for me, like a lot of things you were talking about, the people that had the big dreams and ideas, we are the people to not necessarily fix the thing, but to create the things that will help to make the world better. And I feel like if we, if the people that are like that, if we don't get the support, then that's, it's a, it's a book called The Dream Giver. And it talks about that too. They're saying, <clears throat> it says that, you know, the world is not bad. It's just that people that <clears throat> no, I'm getting choked up now. <laughs> take take no. a sip of water. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been talking. But um it says that the people that um were created to fix the problem are not stepping to their purpose. Mm -hmm. That's why we have bad things happening in the world. Not as bad people. It's people that have the solutions that are not stepping into them or creating, mm -hmm. doing the things that need to be done. And so for me, that's what I feel like. That's my next phase is to help activate those people, create things that they can get the encouragement, the empowerment to keep going forward, to launch that thing or write that or create that program or whatever, because we need it. People need it and people are waiting on it. Just And that's why I had to keep going because I feel like people really need dream killer. And so yeah. if I stop, it's gonna be people that were waiting for that solution that won't get it. So yeah. it's the motivating factor for me to like keep going, even when I don't feel like I can go <laughs> anymore, because I feel like it will be beneficial to the people that really need it. Beautiful. I wrote down, I always take notes during these interviews. Yeah. Because I'm I'm always getting very much inspired. I, yeah. I wrote down what the new MBA is, is maybe creative activism. It's, yeah. or, or being an activist, a creative activist in, in life, you know, and in, in maybe that that is doing so much more than an MBA these days. Mm -hmm. And why I think, because as a creative activist, you learn so much more and it's not possible yeah. To learn all of that by reading a book right, or listening to one teacher. And, right. and creative activism is something you need to do. And maybe it would be beautiful if people would take a year off instead of doing their MBA for that year off, but mm -hmm. to do some creative activism mm -hmm. in whatever area and discover mm -hmm. all these different fields and, and feel how it connects with you because we have been trained yep. that your vision is in a linear way while there are so much more possibilities and then they would do a workshop with you to understand that they have had a lot of dream killers in their lives mm -hmm. and now they're killing their own dreams right mm -hmm. because of yeah. the outside influence mm -hmm. they're now talking to themselves in a negative right. way right yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the circle the thing, is round. <laughs> yeah, Aaron's, we made the circle round. <laughs> <laughs> but that that one point I want to make off of that what you just said, it's important because we all have a, a dialogue that's going on in our heads all day long mm -hmm. about like, oh, you should have did this, or oh, you said this wrong, or whatever. We always critiquing ourselves, 
you know, the, the question is whose voice is with what phrase? Yeah. Yeah. Because it came from somebody or something or an event or whatever. And right. if you can backtrack it, then you start to see like, oh, that came from this person. Like, oh, this person said this to me. Oh, I remember when I got that bad grade and my teacher said, like, I never mind anything or whatever like that. Yeah. So it's all these phrases that we have and they become our voice, but we didn't say them. No. Somebody else said them. And then we start to internalize it. So even we're, if we're it, just it, repeating, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Yeah. I, I remember the sentence of Eckhart Tolle's The Power mm -hmm. of Now, the first sentence, mm -hmm. I hate myself. And then he writes, Who is I and who is myself? Mm -hmm. Because there's something wrong with this sentence, I hate myself. Right. Because in the sentence, it feels like there are two persons, I mm -hmm. and myself. Mm -hmm. Because I hate my eye, that's, that's, that's impossible, but I hate myself is possible. Right. It's weird, right? And I always say, if you tell something to yourself, it better be a good story because you're doing it to yourself, you know? It's, it's, and it's good to be critical to yourself, to improve right. things, fine. Right. But right. it's also nice to have a little bit of a fan club inside of your head mm -hmm. saying, Wow, my beard looks good today. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. It, it, but it, it's, um, and it's it just learning it. But also, I think it's being very mindful of what you listen to and what you watch, because then those can be messages too, because mm -hmm. that compares. Can, can you give an example? What are you thinking about when you say that? Um. So why well, I just go for, for me, I've had that go on a journey of really embracing like how I sound recording. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the way I sounded recorded because you know I'm from I'm from the south. I feel like I, I sound real southern and, and you know some folks say like country or something sometimes. So I would always be real critical about myself, hear myself. Mm -hmm. uh, or I didn't even like to listen to like myself on recordings or whatever like oh, but you know over time I started embracing more and more and then more and more people would hear me talk they're like man you got a radio voice or man you should do you do podcasts da, 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 da. like oh you just got and so the more I started embracing it then other people started to embrace it too and not that it's like oh I did it for that once I became more comfortable with it other people became more comfortable too Mm -hmm. And so I think it's just being being able to be yourself in all spaces, uh, whatever that looks like. And yeah. for a long time, I would. I mean, because just like the way I'm dressed now, if I would have came on here like four years ago, I would have had a, 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 a shirt blade, on. Man. Yeah, a button up shirt and all that. And, and, it, and it creates a certain persona. You know, that's why people, when they ask me like, why don't you, you know, like, not demand people like why don't you really just like embrace dr johnson or whatever and i was like it's not that i don't embrace it it's a piece of me but it's not me as a i'm terrence <laughs> you know what i'm saying like doctor is you know an accomplishment it's an uh, accessory to me but it's not my identity and no. so it however people introduce me call me it's fine because i'm i'm fine with me <laughs> and that doesn't define me uh, and I, I allowed it to define me earlier on in my career, and I thought I had to dress a certain way and speak a certain way. And, yeah, and, because uh, you you needed to fit the profile of that right. what you wanted to achieve, which has nothing to do with your own authenticity. I think it's the unwritten rules in life that messes up everybody. Yeah. Right? There is this unwritten rule that if you go live somewhere, you need to dress up. There's mm -hmm. this unwritten rule that if you're a doctor, you dress mm -hmm. up like that. There's this unwritten rule that if you have your P PhD, then mm -hmm. this is the way you behave. There's an unwritten rule that you can only wear nail polish as a dude when you're gay or you love hard mm -hmm. rock, um, mm -hmm. whatever, right? It's these really ridiculous unwritten rules that yeah. can be dream killers as well. Yeah, because... And one thing I learned to give a, give people a lot more grace in the last couple of years around certain things, 
why people say certain things, people can only speak to you from their experience. Mm -hmm. If they haven't experienced certain things, they don't have a reference point. So if you're outside of their perspective, then the questions start or like, I don't know about that. And it's not always like it's wrong or you doing something that might be off path. It just, it might not be in everybody's perspective or basis of experience. And so it's just like, they just speaking from what they know. <laughs> and so it's like, you know, certain things that you might be exposed to certain things that they might not have. And so sometimes it might be, you know, an exchange where you can share that if they open to that. And then sometimes they not. So then that's fine too. <laughs> but, but just like what you were saying with the, um, you know, as far as like the alternative to the NBA, I think learning these exchanges like the exchange we have, that's why I, I try and meet different people in different parts of the world. It informs me. It gives me different information that I didn't have. Yeah. So now it's like, oh, I know Perry, he in Amsterdam, and we talked about this and da 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 and all that. Like, okay, cool. I might want to go visit Amsterdam. So and like, oh, I know Perry, he did. <laughs> and so and we have a connection now. So you WhatsApp me. You know, yeah. whenever, whatever, yeah. and and it's fine. And I I call that the mycelium network of amazing people in my octopus movement. Yeah. This is what it's about. It's to find your connections. It's to find your tribe. It's mm -hmm. people who are understanding each other, working together, and right. creating something beautiful in the world, and maybe also create some change in the world in right. a better way. Right. The the most powerful driven factor in the world is money mm -hmm. and how beautiful would it be if the most powerful driven motivation mm -hmm. would be the mycelium connection between people right and and the vibration that happens between them right. in having conversations like this yeah. and understanding each other and thinking about stuff and doing things together i find yeah. it much more valuable than a new pair of nikes sorry nike but and you know they they make very cool shoes and you can go right. online and you customize your own shoe i love that shit but i i prefer this this will yeah. stay in here forever right and it's and so it's when you go in the experience with no expectations like that's my thing I just go in and whatever happens, it happens. You know, before I was a real heavy hand, like, okay, I'm doing this, and this needs to lead to this and whatever, and da 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 da. And I just don't do that anymore. I just get on camera and whatever comes out of my mouth, <laughs> which comes out, and whatever the exchange is, and wherever it goes, I allow it to go. So I don't do a lot of prep for things, even workshops or anything else. I just create a framework and wherever it goes, it goes and I'm fine with it now. Before I want to control so much and everything, and now I don't. It's just like I just show up and it's like, okay, well, whatever. Here we go. <laughs> what is supposed to happen? It will happen. Here we go. And then do an interview with a crazy Dutch guy and just let's flow and let's just dance and see what happens, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what do you think of this interview? We are, we reached the, the last minutes. What do you think? What are you pleased no, I, with the I, conversation? Yeah, for me, I, I just enjoy um, my different perspectives, you know, different questions, all that kind of stuff. So I enjoy it. I mean, I enjoy people that have a, a, a certain perspective or passion about the world. Because I think in order to want to do things to help the world, you got to be passionate about people and the world, too. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people don't care about the world or people. <laughs> <laughs> they just want to do what they do but they don't care about the outcome of the people they just don't and so it's good when you come across people that you can tell that that's the same passion and share you know um drive because it's not everybody's motivation it's just not no. it should be but it's, it's, it's not it's, no. it's few and far between <laughs> so, so. Let, let's inspire a lot of people yeah. um right i want to thank you so much Dr. Terrence, for being here. Yeah. Um, we will share underneath the video here on YouTube all the information okay. about you, mm -hmm. where people can find you, mm -hmm. where to connect with you. And yeah. if you're listening to this as a podcast, it's also in the podcast description, how to be in connection with Dr. Terrence. And 
thank you so much for being here. I really enjoyed it. You're a beautiful well, thank, person. Thank you. I love this. And, and let's stay in touch for sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, like I said, I, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate the invite and you allow me to, you know, share time and, and words with you. So, so yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.